Hi there. My name is Chinenye, and I am a second year student at Tilburg University's Global Law. Today, we're here with Anka, a member of Tilburg University's international team, to help us with the tense topic, housing, but in a lighthearted manner. So Anka, mm. can you tell us a little bit about the Tilburg, or the Netherlands, housing situation? Mm. Thank you for having me. Um, I would say that the matter of housing is one of the most important aspects that international students should take into consideration when setting their eyes upon the Netherlands as their study destination. So let us commence with an important piece of information that would also give a realistic perspective uh, on the housing expectations. Dutch universities generally do not own their accommodation facilities. So that means that not all students will have a dorm um, to stay in, like you would find it, for example, in different other countries, such as the US, for instance. So in Tilburg, you have two options. You either go for reserved accommodation or you look for a room or an apartment out there on the private market. Okay, well, I've heard quite a bit about these two terms, reserved accommodation and private market. Could you shed a lot more light on it? Absolutely. So when it comes to reserved accommodation versus private market, Tilburg University works with preferred suppliers that reserve accommodation for international students that start at Tilburg University that year. So first year bachelor students or master students. These reserved accommodations have more of a first come, first serve policy. So they have a limited number of rooms available, which means that not all students have access to reserved accommodation. So when they're full, they're full. And also good to know here is that uh, the contract extends to a certain, uh, so a certain time. So there's a limited uh, time that you can spend in a reserved accommodation uh, option. In terms of price, um, reserved accommodation prices can range from somewhere around uh, 300 to 600 euros uh, for a shared student house with shared facilities. And lastly, about reserved accommodation, it's only available for accepted students. So you have to be conditionally accepted into Tilburg University to access uh, these. And the registration happens around mid-May. Um, the university will email you to tell you the exact date. My piece of advice, advice here would be to be in front of the computer when that happens. So once they indicate a date, be there one hour in advance. Um, living in a dorm and reserved accommodation generally, it's one of the most popular options for internationals and therefore everybody will like, would like to stay there. Um, so if you know the date, save it, uh, make sure that you have that morning free or depending on times on that time, that time free so that you can book a room and have a smooth transition into your studies. <laughs> it's like Ticketmaster. Just pretty waiting much. for it. Yeah, like a con it's, it's concert pretty tickets. much like a concert. Yeah. You're right there, like, I need that room, let me get it, and then you book it, and then that's it. All you need to do is pass your final exams. Since Tilburg University can't guarantee me an accommodation, what other options would I have as an international student for housing then, besides reserved accommodation? Well, there's a private market out there, which, needless to say, it's a bit more complicated uh, to look for a house on the private market, but it's likely that you will end up finding accommodation there. My main advice, uh, and I can talk from a personal experience as well as a previous uh, international student uh, at Tilburg University, is to not wait until reserved accommodation is full to start looking uh, on the private market. So it's always good to take both options into consideration so that you can actually increase your chances of, uh, of finding a room. Um, in the Netherlands, there are these uh, so-called student houses. You can find a room out there on the private market by using social media, for example, or you can go through an agencies. Again, if you go to our web page, you will see a list of recommendations when it comes to both social media pages um, as well as uh, agencies. Please note, maybe that's useful to know, that some agencies do require a certain registration time before you can rent a room. And you can also find this, just more information on this topic on our, on our webpage. And if you are looking for a room through social media, roommates are sometimes chosen by current residents of the house during a visitation, which is, I would say, is just more of a Dutch process of, uh, of looking for a, for a housemate. Yes, I'm familiar with it. <laughs> you are, you went to visitations. I've been to my fair share of visitations, viewings, yes. Uh, because honestly, I'm an international. So mm. the Dutch process of housing really kind of came as a mm. culture shock to me because 
usually, usually you do. assume that you go to a place and you think, oh, this place looks nice. I'm going to take it. Mm -hmm. But really, you go to the place and the people living there, as well as probably the house itself, if it, could t if it had mm -hmm. a mouth and eyes, mm -hmm. would be like, I think you're pretty cool. I think we're going to let you stay here for a while. That's how it was. And that's literally how it goes. It's a very culture shocking experience, but worthwhile, especially once you get to live in some place. I think that underlines the essence right there. So indeed, visitations are uh, these events held by housemates uh, where you try to see if, if there's a fit between you, the person who is looking for a house, and the rest of your roommates, your po potentially future roommates that are already there. So they're just trying to figure out uh, whether you know, you'll have a good relationship, whether there's maybe social chemistry there, uh, and so on and so forth. So different reasons why they would organize these visitations. but to underline the essence it would be to see whether there's the match between personalities for example um, and because we keep talking about how international students are struggling with finding accommodation it's actually hard for Dutch students as well so it can take them uh, almost one year to to find a house that's really a, a fit for them so it's a matter of a housing shortage not necessarily an international housing shortage um, yeah and I would say that that pretty much underlines it there Okay, well, uh, okay, so imagine this. Mm -hmm. So I'm an international. I live somewhere in America, Kenya, mm. Australia. I can't come to the Netherlands at any point in time mm. that I want, besides mm. coming here to learn. What do I do if I found a place that I want to live in, but can't come for the viewing in person? That's a good point and a good question. It's not going to be the end of the world. There are some houses that organize virtual meetings or virtual visitations uh, nowadays, but of course you'll have to check that with the, the, the housing, um, your future, potentially future housemates. And maybe this would be the right time for you to make the first step in that regard and be proactive. So you can oh. just message them, hey, can we set up a video call to get to know each other a bit better? So just, just for them to, uh, to know you and for you to know them as well. It's important to, to have an idea, at least the slightest one, about the people that you're going to share a kitchen, a bathroom, a living room with. Definitely. So for international students, uh, there are a lot of things that they have to overcome, uh, mm -hmm. well, that we have to overcome, you and I included, aside from virtual viewings. What exactly would you say to international students to help them overcome a multitude of issues? And even if you could mention some of the issues mm -hmm. that they could face? Sure. Um, just from maybe personal experience as well, I can think about the Dutch only policies um, that students will sometimes notice um, on Facebook pages, for example, that deal with, uh, with, with housing matters. Tilburg University discourages the how Dutch only policy. However, there's little that we can do practically about it. Um, and this is why you should take the matter of looking for housing seriously and you should start looking at in, in time so that you don't face a major stress factor during summer months, for example, when it's already a bit too late uh, to have a realistic expectation that you will f easily find a, find a room. But also from personal experience, I've been living in the Netherlands for a couple of years now, so again, a former international student myself, what I would advise um, students is to not take the Dutch only rule too personally. Mm -hmm. uh, many Dutch students just prefer to live uh, with, with, with people that speak their, sp speak their language in the same room. So, What would an international student have to do as soon as they're accepted into Tilburg University, especially along the lines of looking for accommodation? Mm -hmm. I would start going to our webpage and check our preferred suppliers list. So take a look at the reserved accommodation options, then keep an eye on the registration opening for those uh, for those options. So uh, as I said, it's around mid-May and this date is to be confirmed via via email. So the university will email those uh, those students. Then I would advise students to register on click von cameras as soon as they are admit admitted and to also take a look at the options on the private market. So Facebook pages, um, also they can take a look at the agencies that we recommend. Our web page focused on accommodation is uh, updated and designed to help students orient themselves within this entire process of looking for housing. So they can start with our web page and a thorough research uh, into the housing options that they have here. Okay, that's mm. honestly a lot. I mm -hmm. So much, <laughs> just so much. Uh, mm. But with that in mind, 
Um, I've faced situations, mm -hmm. uh, myself and my sister, we were looking for a place to stay mm -hmm. and someone asked us to pay our deposit through mm -hmm. something like TripAdvisor or then they would send us the key via mail. Mm -hmm. We didn't do it. We didn't do it. We mm -hmm. still have our money. <laughs> but um, what would mm -hmm. you advise to certain people who look for their housing through uh, agencies that they find online mm -hmm. or Facebook uh, and someone just saying, I have a house, come live here if you pay me, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. What would you advise to people who are almost scammed? I'm glad you followed your instinct there because it was the right call indeed. Uh, sadly, there are people who take advantage of students looking for housing, especially international students, since they start this process while they are not in the Netherlands. Um, and if I were to offer some tips, maybe I can go along the idea of always checking whether that address actually exists in Tilburg. Never transfer money to a landlord that claims that uh, they are abroad and you just wire transfer him the, the or him or her the deposit uh, and then you get the keys after via mail so this is indeed a sign that 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 is likely a scam generally if something sounds too good to be true then it probably is so in that regard if you do a research take some time a day um, and look at how much a unfurnished room would cost uh, versus how much a furnished room would cost. So just go out there on the private market, use those online tools, those social media uh, pages to to have your to make an idea for yourself about the cost that you can expect. And I would say that that would already uh, be a good a good start, especially when it comes to the private market. And if you need a second opinion or if you feel that something is not right, then you can contact us at. A study house uh, student housing at Tilburg University at EDU and our colleagues there can can help you they can take a look at your contract for example to see whether there's anything fishy about it well there would definitely be a lot of things mm. fishy about paying through TripAdvisor yeah deposit I would say Goodness. so you're a law student of course you didn't <laughs> fall into that trap <laughs> either that or it's just delayed reaction yeah, um, <laughs> but yes uh, with that in mind uh, there are a lot of contracts that people mm. have to sign when they're getting into finding a house or finally actually settling down. When looking at the advertisements mm. online, there's a lot of terminology that's mentioned. Could you help mm. shed some light on some of it? Because I can't speak Dutch, obviously. Um, right. Would you mind helping with that? Of course. Uh, I abused Google Translate uh, when I moved to the Netherlands Don't as well. Don't we all? <laughs> indeed, indeed. So you can expect that you know speaking Dutch is not going to be the most familiar sound that you uh, that you hear, and of course that there are some legal terms um, that might seem might seem unfamiliar. For example, kamer actually means room, and you're going to find this word in different different platforms and different conversations and different terms in the in the, the contract on the web pages. So kamer is a room. Um, then maybe what's good to know is that there are different parts uh, and different, let's say, items that you have to pay for. So you have the basic rent, uh, which is quite common. So this is your the cost of your accommodation, but without anything else. And this will not be the final amount that you pay at the end of the month. There are always extra costs. For example, extra cost for electricity, extra cost for water, for, for extra cost for internet and so on and so forth. So this is the monthly cost of your utilities and you always have to pay uh, electricity and uh, and water so you can also find them under the uh, terms of GWL and GWE there's also this um, not sure if it's really Dutch but there's this service cost concept uh, which means that sometimes the landlord will charge a monthly fee to maintain common areas of the building that you're living in, um, such as cleaning the hallways cleaning the st stairways or if you live in a taller building pay paying people to Clean my to windows. Clean the windows. Oh and my so gosh. That would be ideal, right? I yeah. Think it, I think it mostly <laughs> happens in uh, tall buildings. I live buildings. in a somewhat tall building. So, yeah, every now and then there's some guy who's like right outside cleaning the window. And your service cost does not include it? I have it no does, idea. Right? It likely included. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so, you I have, have to no check idea. your contract. Yeah, I need to check my contract now. Yeah. So, these would be, I would say, just the, the main terms that you can expect. Um, so, you're not going to be alone in this entire process. You can reach out to university, but also. You maybe you read a contract and something seems off to you or you really don't understand it even after you translated it. So if you have questions during this process, you can send your contract, for instance, to the HUR team Tilburg, which is a uh, legal assistance team uh, for well, not only students, but residents of, uh, of the city of Tilburg. So they can help you to check the legality of the contract. So there are ways to reach out for help. There 
there are, there are ways to reach out for information. You just have to be proactive about it. And I can add a short note here that especially Dutch research universities in the Netherlands look for independently minded students. So you will be offered help, but you need to reach out for it. Um, and this is the profile that, uh, that universities expect. So it's not only related to the academic life, but it's also related to practicalities, mm -hmm. uh, such as looking for housing or finding an internship and so on. It's always so helpful to hear these because mm -hmm. some, of, some internationals really don't know mm -hmm. anyone and they mm -hmm. just start off from nowhere. So mm -hmm. Anka, would you have any sum up takeaways that you'd like to share with the viewers? Absolutely. I will start with the piece of advice that I generally give to international students, that are prospective international students that I talk to, not only those who want to uh, live in Tilburg, but those who are interested in studying in the Netherlands generally. You have to start looking for accommodation as soon as you decided to, to study in the Netherlands. And the moment that you get accepted into a university, if you get accepted into Tilburg University, then that should become your priority next to your final exams, of course. So this is essential to find a room, not only because you need a roof <laughs> above your head, but also because if you move to the Netherlands, then you need a, an address to register at the Hemente to get your BSN. Um, you need to apply for, you need an address to apply for subsidies for example to open a Dutch bank account which might be very useful especially if you don't have a SEPA bank account mm -hmm. uh, to to you know buy a phone subscription and so on and so forth so it's very important it's not only about having a roof above your head although that's surely the most that's a good plus yeah <laughs> th that would be a good uh, plus there indeed um, another another point to to sum this up Tilburg is not the only option actually so in case you are accepted a bit later on in the summer, maybe you submitted your application later and the reserved accommodation options are run out um, and maybe there is any room that you find in Tilburg. There are surrounding cities uh, that you could live and this is something that both some international students and also Dutch students do and the Dutch public transportation is is quite good it's um, really good so you can travel easily either by bike there are bike lanes everywhere even if you live farther away from the university you can take the train Tilburg University has a train station uh, next to the university uh, there are buses available so it's not the end of the world if in the beginning you find a, a room that uh, or an apartment or just an accommodation option that's not necessarily in Tilburg so don't get limited by the idea of living in Tilburg also be aware of scams. As I mentioned, be careful with paying your deposits, be careful, be careful with the agreement, read it, make sure that you understand it and otherwise reach out for help. Um, our website is a very good source of information when it comes to orienting students into this process of, of looking for a house. So I would, I would warmly recommend students to go through, through our webpage and see what their options are. And uh, yeah, you also might be eligible for a housing subsidy. So if you're looking, if you're interested in that, you can find more and more information on our on our website. There are of course certain conditions that you need to meet. And I will wrap it up with maybe a piece of information that's not that easy to hear as a prospective international student, and uh, it's also not that easy for me to say it as a university representative. But if you haven't found accommodation one month before the start of your studies. Um, so before you actually arrive in the Netherlands, then we recommend you to reconsider your decision and the enroll for the program. Sadly, we cannot guarantee that once you arrive in the Netherlands, there will be uh, maybe an emergency accommodation spot for you or a short, short, uh, short stay accommodation spot for you, short term. Um, in which case, again, if you haven't found housing, we don't recommend you to take the risk uh, and come to the Netherlands uh, unprepared. And this is why it start, it's that important to start looking for housing in time and make it a priority for you. This is no light subject uh, to, to play around uh, with. Thank you so much, Anka. Honestly, it mm -hmm. has been amazing having you here. Mm -hmm. I hope we can have you again with Thank me you as your host. Thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much to the viewers who tuned in. And I hope this has been such an eye-opening experience for those of you coming to Tilburg or coming to the Netherlands looking for housing. Until mm -hmm. next time, this has been Anka and Chenenye. And thank you for viewing.